going to read The Iron Man by Ted Hughes, first chapter. Chapter 1 The Coming of the Iron Man The Iron Man came to the top of the cliff. How far had he walked? Nobody knows. Where had he come from? Nobody knows. How was he made? Nobody knows. Taller than a house, the Iron Man stood at the top of the cliff, on the very brink in the darkness. The wind sang through his eye and fingers, his great eye and head shaped like a dustbin, but as big as a bedroom, slowly turned to the right, slowly turned to the left. His eye and ears turned this way, that way. He was hearing the sea. His eyes were like headlamps, glowed white, then red, then infrared, searching the sea. Never before had the Iron Man seen the sea. He swayed in the strong wind that pressed against his back. He swayed forward on the brink of the high cliff, and his right foot, his enormous iron right foot, lifted up, out, into space, and the Iron Man stepped forward off the cliff into nothingness. Crash! Down the cliff the Iron Man came toppling head over heels. Crash! 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 From rock to rock, snag to snag, tumbling slowly, and as he crashed and crashed and crashed, his iron legs fell off, his iron arms broke off, and the hands broke off his arms. His great eye and ears fell off, and his eyes fell out, his great iron head fell off. All the separate pieces tumbled, scattered, crashing, bumping, clanging, down onto the rocky beach far below. A few rocks tumbled with him, then silence. Only the sound of the sea, chewing away at the edge of the rocky beach, where the bits and pieces of the Iron Man lay scattered far and wide, silent and unmoving. Only one of the iron hands, lying beside an old sand log washed up seaman's boot, waved its fingers for a minute, like a crab on its back. Then it lay still. While the stars, while the stars went on wheeling through the sky, and the wind went on tugging at the grass on the cliff top, and the sea went on boiling and booming, nobody knew the Iron Man had fallen. Night passed. Just before dawn, as the darkness grew blue and the shapes of the rocks separated from each other, two seagulls flew crying over the rock. They landed on a patch of sand. They had two chicks in a nest on the cliff. Now they were searching for food. One of the seagulls flew up. Ah! Uh -huh. He had seen something. He glided low over the sharp rocks. He landed and picked something up. Something shiny, round and hard. It was one of the Iron Man's eyes. He brought it back to his mate. They both looked at this strange thing. And the eye looked at them. It rolled from side to side, looking first at one gull, then at the other. The gulls, peering at it, thought it was a strange kind of clam, peeping at them from its shell. Then the other gull flew up, wheeled around and landed and picked something up, some awkward, heavy thing. The gull flew low and slowly, dragging the heavy thing. Finally, the gull dropped it beside the eye. This new thing had five legs. It moved. The gulls thought it was a strange kind of crab. They thought they had found a strange crab and a strange clam. They did not know they had found the Iron Man's eye and the Iron Man's right hand. But as soon as the eye and the hand got together, the eye looked at the hand. Its light glowed blue. The hand stood up on three fingers and its thumb and craned its forefinger like a long nose. It felt around, it touched the eye. Gleefully it picked up the eye and tucked it under its middle finger. The eye peered out between the forefinger and thumb. Now the hand could see. It looked around, then it darted and jabbed one of the gulls with its stiffly held finger, then darted at the other and jabbed him. The two gulls flew up into the wind with a frightened cry. Slowly then the hand crept over the stones, searching. It ran forward suddenly, 
grabbed something and tugged, but the thing was stuck between two rocks. The thing was one of the Iron Man's arms. At last, the hand left the arm, went scuttering hither and thither among the rocks, till it stopped and touched something gently. This thing was the other hand. This new hand stood up and hucked its finger round the little finger of the hand with the eye and let itself be led. Now the two hands, the seeing one leading the blind one, walking on their fingertips, went back together to the arm and together they tugged it free. The hand with the eye fastened itself onto the wrist of the arm. The arm stood up and walked on its hand. The other hand clung on behind as before and the strange trio went searching, an eye. There it was, blinking at them, speechlessly beside a black and white pebble. The seeing hand fitted the eye to the blind hand, and now both hands could see. They went running among the rocks, soon they found a leg, they jumped on top of the leg, and the leg went hopping over the rocks, with the arm swinging from the hand that clung to the top of the leg. The other hand clung on top of that hand. The two hands with their eyes guided the leg, twisting it this way and that as a rider guides a horse. Soon they found another leg and another arm. Now each hand with an eye under its palm and an arm dangling from its wrist rode on a leg separately about the beach. Hop, 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 they went, peering among the rocks. One found an arm, and at the same moment the other found the giant torso. Then the busy hands fitted the legs to the torso. Then they fitted the arms, each fitting the other. And the torso stood up with legs and arms, but no head. It walked about the beach, holding its eyes up in its hands, searching for its lost head. At last, there was the head, eyeless, earless, nested in a heap of red seaweed. Now in no time the Iron Man had fitted his head back and his eyes were in place and everything at place except for one ear. He strode about the beach searching for his lost ear as the sun rose over the sea and the day came. The two girls sat on the ledge high on the cliff. They watched the immense man striding to and fro over the rocks below. Between them on the nesting ledge lay a great iron ear. The gulls could not eat it. The baby gulls could not eat it. There it lay on the high ledge. Far below, the Iron Man searched. At last he stopped and looked at the sea. Was he thinking the sea had stolen his ear? Perhaps he was thinking the sea had come up while he lay scattered and had gone down again with his ear. He walked towards the sea. He walked into the breakers and there he stood for a while the breakers bursting around his knees. Then he walked in deeper, deeper, deeper. The gulls took off and glided down low over the great iron head that was now moving slowly up through the swell. The eyes blazed red, level with the wave tops, till a big wave covered them and foam spouted over the top of the head. The head still moved out under water. The eyes on the top of the head appeared for a moment in a hollow of the swell. Now the eyes were green and the sea covered them and the head. The gulls circled low over the line of bubbles that went on moving slowly out into the deep.